What's up guys? Today's topic is pretty straightforward. Um, it's probably one of the most common questions I get and it's the question of how do I jump higher? And at first, um, and when I first heard this question, it's kind of a simple question, but unfortunately it is simple because I think at times um, we fall into traps of chasing small percentages and I will be the first to admit I've done this many times myself and at times we miss the big picture. First and foremost, when it comes to jumping high, you need to be strong. And what I mean by strong is you need to have a very good ability to produce a lot of force relative to your body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds and you can squat 300 pounds, that's a lot of force you can produce relative to your body weight. But if you weigh 300 pounds and squat 600 pounds, you might be able to lift more weight, but your force per body weight or pound per body weight that you can lift is actually less. So being very strong relative to your body weight. And people say, oh, you know, is there a specific movement I need to be strong in. And this is where some of the debate comes in. Honestly, I think you just need to be strong in a movement that allows you to express vertical forces. For some people, squatting works well, and for some, squatting doesn't work well. For some, trap bar deadlifts work well, and for some, you know, trap bar deadlifts don't work well. I think it has a lot to, to do with the biomechanical position that individual is in. And so if they're in a more um, favorable position to produce vertical forces, especially um, through the knees, sorry, quads, I guess we get more scientific, um, and the glutes in a trap bar versus maybe a squat where they're very back dominant because they hinge really far forward, then maybe that trap bar deadlift is best for them. Maybe a front squat's better. Whatever that movement is that allows you to express vertical force in a safe manner where you're taxing the lower body and you're not having a limiting factor like in the lower back causing your, um, you know, not able to squat as much, or maybe it's more a back dominant squat. So being very strong. Secondly, and this goes hand in hand with being strong, you got to have skill to actually jump. Some people don't know how to jump, especially an approach jump. They go too slow into the approach. Um, they speed up too quickly and then they slow down at the end. And so they don't smoothly accelerate. They don't have the ability for that penultimate step, so second to last step, to really extend um, and transfer force efficiently. You see some people who uh, aren't very skilled. They'll sprint up, they'll look good, and then they'll stutter step a whole bunch right before the end. They'll almost do a jump stop, and basically they're doing a counter movement jump up towards you know the, whatever they're jumping at. And so having the skill, especially in an approach jump, whether it be double leg or single leg, both are slightly different, to transfer um, that momentum you're building up. A standstill standing vertical jump is typically best represented um, by someone who's very, very strong uh, relative to body weight. It doesn't take a whole bunch of skill. There is some arm swing mechanics and some loading mechanics and understanding how far you can dip and what's optimal for your dip, but it's not necessarily as skilled as the approach jump or the single leg jump, which is why typically even a hands-on hips squat jump or counter movement jump is used to assess raw lower body explosive abilities. The third aspect of this is developing um, reactive strength. And so what I mean by that, if someone is going to run into a jump, those last couple of steps require you to have some elasticity, some storage of that you know momentum you're building up and transferring that into the vertical. And so that's where doing plyometrics is obviously important. Things like depth jumps, different bounds, different repetitive jumps, where you're working on the elastic properties, the reactive strength qualities of that muscle itself. So again, being really strong for your body weight, being skilled, being reactive, and then being powerful. And I, I hate that word because it means really vague, but being able to move, um, you know, a heavy to you know, moderately, sorry, moderately heavy to you know, moderate load rapidly and explosively. So if you watch someone do um, like a hang clean is typically used for this. Now, whether you agree with the hang clean being the best exercise for that, whatever, I don't really care. Um, but a hang clean has to, you have to project it so far. So having a strong hang clean is often looked at as being powerful because you have to move a certain load, right? A certain height to actually catch it. And so that's why hang clean, you know, 
by the constraints of the movement itself is typically looked as a powerful movement. Um, but you can do other movements as well, like a jump, uh, trap bar, jump squat, dumbbell jumps, um, anything loaded, right? <laughs> I don't need anything loaded that you jump with is going to challenge your ability to explosively jump. And if you can jump higher or be more explosive with that, that's going to help transfer over. And also it's not just being explosive, but it's being able to reverse that load quickly. And so part of that being explosive aspect is the whole movement itself. So can you rapidly go down quick and then rapidly come up quick? Not being a slow loader. And so that portion has to do with your rate of eccentric force development, the skill itself, what's your length tension relationship? Are you very good at producing force quickly over small angles? And then lastly is maximal high velocity work. And this is where you might be doing band assisted movements. And this is now where you're working on um, your ability to produce force very quickly because the time constraints have been reduced. This is something that you typically see later on in someone's program. Um, I've seen a lot of benefits from it myself, but I've seen a lot of benefits from myself because I think from a skill standpoint, it's been very beneficial and teaching me how to rapidly load quick and not necessarily because the movement itself is this, um, you know, miraculous movement, even though it does have a lot of benefits um, in regards to challenging uh, the motor pattern itself and teaching you how to move and ultimately forcing you to have rapid rates of concentric force. What happens though, when the big debate comes up is people go, oh, you know, um, you know what's strong enough? Strong enough is when the effort you put in to getting strong no longer reaps the same reward. And so for some people, it takes a lot and a lot and a lot of effort to get stronger and stronger. And maybe for them, they're not going to get the most bang out of their buck trying to increase their relative uh, strength to body weight ratio. Maybe it's working on some of the more powerful movements. Maybe it's the reactive strength index. Um, maybe it's the higher velocity stuff. So this is where profiling someone and understanding what someone's reactive strength index is, you know, how reactive are they, looking at their skill, grading their skill, understanding their strength, understanding their, understanding their high velocity abilities um, will really allow you to then say, okay, if I do hit a wall with maximal strength, what area should I target next? So it makes it much more of a coordinated attack. And so when it comes to, you know, jumping high and uh, people wanting to, you know, whether it's dunking or just, you know, they just want to jump high on things. It's understanding that ultimately force is the driving factor and then manipulating your variables around force, how you express force is really where it comes into play. Uh, Matt Van Dyke dive, well, Matt Van Dyke and I dive into this topic and force is king. Um, that's my website, www.strongbyscience.net. Um, we talk about how this progression works, and if you're interested, we have a book on it, and you can check it out. But ultimately, it's right, understanding force, but also understanding the context of force itself. So maximal strength relative to body weight, right? And then we want to be actually be skilled, uh, have the ability to do it. Then we want to be reactive. We want to be an explosive and powerful, and we want to work on our high-velocity uh, strength as well. So that's my answer to how you jump high, how you manipulate those variables, what exercises you pick is up to you. Understanding why you're doing the most important because that's going to drive how you implement um, those specific modalities into your training. Thanks for listening, guys. Really appreciate it and take care.